Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So the other day I got an interesting comment that deals with a very important subject. It was on the video about doing the Fizzbuzz beginner project. This is a beginner project where the goal is to build Fizzbuzz. So it's a really simple exercise. Basically print the numbers 1 through 100, then if the number is divisible by 3 you print Fizz, if it's divisible by 5 you print Buzz, if both 3 and 5 print Fizzbuzz, if not print the number. So it's a pretty simple beginner exercise. It's a great one if you want to just get some reps on your own programming experience. In the video, I do a walkthrough and I build the Fizzbuzz exercise. Basically just checking if divisible by both Fizzbuzz, if just 3 Fizz, if just 5 Buzz, otherwise just a number. So if that's a valid solution and it perfectly matches what our project goals are, it does satisfy all of these conditions. And then over here in the interesting comment, so I agree this is a good beginner exercise, but I feel that the solution shown is exactly the one that would make one be sorted out from the applicants. Meaning he's saying that if you build it the way that I build it, it would basically take you out of the interview pool. For the people who want to think about this further, you could try to solve it for 3, 4, 6, and even 10 different number word pairs in a way that is more expandable. That would definitely be more advanced, but also very useful. So basically the comment is saying how the code that I wrote here basically only solves that exact same problem. If you want to add more numbers, more text, we would have to refactor this quite a bit. Which is definitely true. If your goal was expandability, if you want to expand this in the future to many more use cases, then you could definitely find much better ways of doing this. But then over here, like I said in my reply, so premature optimization is one of the worst things you can do, so I would definitely disagree with you there. Write the code that solves the problem at hand, not an imaginary problem that you might or might not have in the future. You can always make your code more modular, more expandable, but in many cases doing that just leads to a lot of wasted effort since you never actually end up taking advantage of that modular. So the key here is right here, the premature optimization. I have to say that me, since I am primarily a programmer, I definitely get the appeal to that. I love the idea of just starting writing some code, making a really nice, really cool, complex system, something that is super modular, using all kinds of interface generics and so on, making something that would be expandable and usable in pretty much any scenario I can imagine. That really appeals to me, that sounds really awesome, but at the same time, I'm smart enough to know that would likely be just a waste of time. If you're writing code just for fun, then sure, that sounds like a really awesome thing, but if you're writing code to actually try to build something, like build some kind of game, if you're actually trying to reach the finish line, if so, then those kinds of really wild detours, those are really just going to cost you a ton of time and in the end, not really end up making anything better. So here, could you refactor this code in order to be able to support different numbers, different words? And yep, absolutely you could, but should you? That is a big question. The goal was simply to achieve this goal, achieve this specific set of requirements. And for these specific set of requirements, yep, the code that I wrote works perfectly fine. If you were to change the requirements, you would have to change the code as well. But if the requirements don't change, then all the work that you do to make the code more modular, more expandable, all that work is wasted because the requirements are never going to change. So that is basically the very important thing that I want to tell you with this video. Always be aware of premature optimization. Again, like I said, I get it. I love programming. I love writing tons of really complex code. But always remember, what is the primary goal you're trying to achieve? Is it really just writing code just for fun? If so, great, do that. But if your goal is to actually try to build something, like for example, trying to finish some game, if so, then all of these detours are really just going to cost you a ton of time. So when in doubt, always write the code that solves the problem at hand, not an imaginary problem you might or might not have in the future. This is definitely my big advice to you. I mean, it's very, very common to hear many developers, many indie developers, many solo developers constantly talking about the problem of actually finishing games. Like everyone can start a new game, everyone can start a new prototype, but actually taking it to the finish line, that is something that a lot of people have a lot of trouble with. And this is one of those reasons why. You just start going into all kinds of detours. In this case, I'm talking about programming, but it can be anything. It can be art, like you are trying to polish on the UI to make it really perfect, when in reality, just basic would work fine for whatever you're trying to do. Or maybe the game design. Maybe you've got a handful of mechanics that work great, but you're still trying to come up with a bunch more, even though the game would work perfectly fine just with these ones. So even though I'm talking specifically about programming over here, always remember that this concept really applies to anything. Since you, like me, have limited time and resources, make sure you focus that time and resources, focus those on the problem at hand and not an imaginary problem that you might or might not have in the future. And again, if the requirements do change in the future, if so, then it's exactly what I said here, which is you can always make your code more modular, more expandable. And specifically, you can always do that afterwards. For example, on my complete c -sharp course, I have a very, very important lecture on the topic of refactoring. This is a super important thing that you need to know about. It's basically how code is a semi-living thing. Code is not meant to be solid like a rock. It is not meant to, you write it once and that's it, you never touch it again. No, you can write it once. You can write the code that solves whatever problem you're currently trying to solve. And in the future, if you have a different problem you're trying to solve with that same code, if so, you can just go into that code, refactor that code, expand upon it, make it more modular, whatever you need to in order to solve the new problem, and then just leave it at that. Then once you find another problem, go back, refactor it again, do the same thing over and over again. So refactoring is a super, super powerful thing. 
If you haven't seen this lecture, I highly recommend you do. Especially if you are on around the intermediate level, you absolutely need to know about refactoring and you absolutely need to know that refactoring is a perfectly normal part of the process. For example, I made my free Kitchen Chaos course. And on this one, the design that I was going for was you got a player character and the player character just cooking stuff and making deliveries. Meaning the code does not have any concept of, for example, people walking into a restaurant, ordering food, sitting down, something like that. That does not exist in the code base at all, because again, that was not the original prototype, the original design that I was going for. The design that I was going for just involved one player character just interacting with objects. So that is exactly the problem that I tried to solve, that is exactly the code that I wrote just to solve that problem, just to solve that design and nothing else. I could have spent a ton of time making it modular. I could have spent a ton of time adding all kinds of code to support guests just in case I want to have guests in the future. But again, that was not my goal. So if I did that, that would be a ton of wasted effort. So in the end, I wrote the code just to solve the design that I want to solve without thinking about any future things that I might or might not want to have. And for example, if right now I want to make, let's say, Kitchen Chaos 2, if I want to make that, then yeah, I could go back, I could refactor that code, make it support, for example, having some kind of restaurant, Guests come in, they sit down on some kind of chair, they make an order and so on. So if I want to do that, I could just go back, refactor it, so I don't have to basically try to imagine the problems that I'm going to have potentially in the future and work on those before I have those problems. Nope, when I get to the point where I have those problems, that's when I go back, refactor, make it work. And actually one great practical example of what exactly I'm talking about is this. It's my grid system playlist. This was something that was not planned ahead of time. I've made a bunch of videos using this core component, this core grid system. But I did not plan those ahead of time. The very first video over here, this one was done five years ago. This one literally just handles creating a grid. That's it, just a grid. That was my goal with this tutorial and that is all I made. Over here, I literally just have a grid of different shapes and inside each grid position, I can source some kind of that. That was it. That was the only code that I wanted to make and that is exactly what I did. I just did that and nothing else. And then I wanted to expand upon it. So then I went back, I refactored it. I added more features to that core system. I had new requirements that I want to store multiple pieces of that on each grid position. So yep, I made it work with generics. So I went back, refactored the code, made it support the new requirements, and that was it. Then I wanted to take that system and use it in some kind of grid building system, some kind of city building like game. So once again, I went back with new requirements, I refactored a bunch of code, made it support the new requirements that I had, rewrote a bunch of code, added a bunch more features, and yep, I managed to achieve the goal that I wanted, the new goal that I wanted. But again, importantly, when I first made the very first video, that very first video, I did not make it thinking I would eventually make a city builder. No, back then I just wanted to make a very simple system and that was all that I focused on. I got that working and then as the requirements changed, then I modified the code in order to support the new requirements. So when it comes to this topic, then this would definitely be my advice. So basically premature optimization, try not to do that. Focus your time, focus your energy on solving the problem at hand. Solve just the requirements that you need to solve. And if in the future those requirements do change, go back, refactor it, solve those problems and just those. And then if they change once again, go back, refactor, change, so on, and so on and on. Always remember how time is your most limited resource. If you have infinite time, then sure, make your code as expandable, as modular as you can. But since you don't have infinite time, since your time is limited, because that, focus your time, focus your energy on solving the problem at hand, and not any imaginary problem that you might, or likely, might not have in the future. Did you hear the story on how the game about digging a hole actually made millions of dollars? Or do you know how much is a Steam Daily deal worth and how you might get one? Did you hear about the problem of making more money with assets and games? Or have you done this extremely important exercise? Those are all things that I covered in my Game Dev Report newsletter. It's what I write every single Sunday with any weekly Game Dev news and some interesting articles that I come across every week. Sign up for free with the link in the description. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.